I started watching your shows on Facebook, Thanks. and oh, I nice. really loved them. So well, I thought, oh, really glad to hear that. Got to get you guys on here. I, I gave you guys a big list of things I want to talk about, but mm -hmm. the first thing I want to start off with is female orgasm. And why do I want to talk about that? Because it's a wonderful thing to talk about. <laughs> yeah. okay. We don't talk about it enough because everybody should know, and it's crazy that people don't. And How about that? people don't know. I mean. Men don't know much about the clitoris, and some women are confused, and it's an elusive too. thing, it's, and it's very yeah. tricky, and mm -hmm. it's, it, I mean, right. you guys it's are the experts. It's not lost so. on us that it's kind of unusual that two dudes, two brothers, have ended up in this field that <laughs> right. historically has Talking been about female orgasm and clitoris. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. But it's always just been <laughs> stunning, truly, to yeah. both of us, yeah. that... I mean, we shouldn't know more than a woman about a woman's body. No, that, that always drives and me. How but you do. Women, <laughs> always drives me. We do. Yes. You and, and how many do. women have yeah. no idea? I know. I mean, look, if a woman grows up calling it my down there, then that's a clue. <laughs> yeah. That she's Okay, before we go any further, do you know the percentage how many women never have orgasms? Well, Not really. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you. Okay. Uh, and it's a little sketchy because it depends on how it's defined and a whole lot of other stuff. Uh, some studies will say about 5%. Others will say 10 to 15 percent. Okay. So it really depends on how it's defined. Yeah, are, they, are you polling people? Is that yeah. No, there's, there, there is <laughs> data. There's people that study these things. But yeah. I think okay. what, what's uh, more uh, fun and important to talk about is the fact that, you know, what percentage of women don't have orgasm through intercourse alone? Mm hmm yeah, and because everybody I if this thinks. Is close enough. Right. Everybody thinks you know. There's the way you have yes. sex, okay, I was and you just do that. that was my and next work. And if it doesn't work, <laughs> most women think there's something Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Them. Right. And guys oh. don't know any better. They just think I'm supposed to do this until it works. And, right. 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 And, and there's, so I, there's I confusion on in? both sides. Okay. Yeah, and this is a, a big source of confusion for a lot of women as well. And okay. This is where I, I often talk about how, let's say, Cosmo, you know, Cosmopolitan magazine. Yeah. On the one hand, when it first came out. Best thing that ever happened to female sexuality, but quickly became the worst. Why? Because we also have to the ask how many women have orgasms but don't know it. And these are wait, a lot wait, of the wait, women wait, that wait, complain wait, that they don't have orgasms. Because Cosmo said if wait, you're not wait, having these explosive multiples Fourth of July, you're not right. your full ah. potential. Right? So, so women are coming in expecting this big thunderclap uh -huh. and not really being aware of their own orgasmic styles. And okay. theirs may be just more subtle, pulsy, and it doesn't have the big thunderclap, the big drama. So while they're waiting for that, they miss their own. Right. But okay. very often when I have a woman come in uh, and she's saying she doesn't have orgasms, that's one of my first questions. Do you read Cosmo? <laughs> <laughs> and if the answer is yes, throw it away. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, even it, it's like a diagnosis. This term anorgasmia. Right. anorgasmia. Right. And we should give a nod to our uh, our colleague uh, from Amsterdam, Ellen Lahn. Mm -hmm. She says, don't use that word ever. Yeah. Okay. It's not anorgasmic, like a woman can't have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. It's pre orgasmic. Okay. She just hasn't. Yet. Okay. Right. Right. So okay. every woman, unless there's something wrong or something missing, every woman mm -hmm. should be able to, but many women haven't yet. Right? Okay. Right? So it's uh, a learning. My next thing. question is uh, clitoral stimulation necessary for a woman to achieve orgasm yes. in all cases? For, for most, not at all, but for okay. most. I um, would say somehow it has to be involved, no, even through but, intercourse. But see, this is, this is where I don't. I, I, don't I, would, I would disagree with that. Oh, um, we have a disagreement here. And this, this is sort of a, a wiring thing. Right? Men okay. are wired to basically have orgasm with physical stimulation. There has to be some level of physical stimulation. Now, we can get aroused without it. But okay. we need physical stimulation, even if it's just the weight of a sheet or the, right. a the breeze the that's blowing. <laughs> you know, it's got to be something that's physical. Thing, you know. um, women are capable of what we call fantasy-induced or imagery-induced orgasm. You can have a truly inside-out. There are women off, that have right? orgasms just by thinking and really? fantasizing. Women that have orgasm having their necks kind of nibbled on, their ah, earlobes nibbled ear lobes, on, ear lobes. Okay, stimulation. I can see that. Mm -hmm. All right. uh, you had a, a question about anal orgasm. Yeah. Uh, and it's not that they're orgasming, uh, orgasming from the anus, it's just that that stimulation is allowing okay. them to have orgasms. Okay. So women can have orgasms with any or no physical contact. So while most women during intercourse, no. especially if there's it's some the women that can just cross their legs and squeeze kind of, <laughs> and have an orgasm. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and they can go as long as they choose. Right. So I would say for most women in typical 
uh, sexual situations, yes, clitoral stimulation is essential. But okay. it's not necessary for all women. Not 100%. But I also okay. want to, I think it's important that people understand exactly what we're talking about because that's part of mm -hmm. the issue that mm -hmm. most people just right. don't know. Mm -hmm. What it is when we say the clitoris, everybody just thinks, you know, the little man in the book. Oh, yes, I want you to right. explain mm -hmm. everybody, exactly everybody what everybody it is should Google. physiologically. Everybody should go to Google okay. and type in clitoral anatomy. Yes. Or and anatomy see of okay. the clitoris. Mm -hmm. Because besides that little button that you see right. on There's all a lot the more anatomy diagrams, right? yeah. that's right. That's just it's the tip really, of the iceberg. It, remember, right. in an embryo, in a fetus, <laughs> okay. it comes from the same tissue as a man's penis. As the penis, mm -hmm. okay. And yep. it grows, it has a shaft, it's made the same way as the penis, tubes of spongy tissue that fill okay. up with blood and get erect, mm -hmm. except instead of getting erect and standing up and out, it gets erect and pulls up and under. Oh. And then it bends down in the back, goes, a oh, shaft, we're talking Thank about you. a shaft. All this is going on. It splits right. into two legs. The roots. What? Two legs with yeah. bulbs that surround them that are part of the clitoris, and both these legs and bulbs surround the vagina and the urethra. Oh, wow. Right. So when even during intercourse, it's still the, still stimulating the inside it. parts of the clitoris that are being stimulated. Right. And in fact... It's not the vagina. There's nothing in the vagina. Right. The whole G-spot thing. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. And that's no basically button. what the G-spot is. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's, it's when pushing up on the roof, so to speak, they say you use that come hither motion if you yeah. want to find the G spot. Right. But it's not the roof of the vagina, mm -hmm. it's what's it's above right. it. It's part it's of the clitoris? It's pressing on those legs, those roots yes. of the clitoris that oh. are extending down to the sort and, of top and wall of the And literally surrounding So the you know, penis can stimulate those roots. Absolutely. Yeah. Ah. That's yeah. why if a woman is on top during intercourse, then mm -hmm. she's more likely to be able to find the right position and depth and speed that could mm -hmm. provide that mm -hmm. internal stimulation right. so that okay. a bigger percentage of women could have orgasms just from intercourse. Right. Just from intercourse. Right. And if you look okay. at these, quote, G-spot vibrators, mm -hmm. it's kind of a regular vibrator, but it is curved. It's a sort of an angle mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. it's easier to just hit that spot, that spot. and put the pressure up there. But what I think is Okay, cookie. so where exactly is that spot? In and up? Come hither. Yeah, yeah. Come right. hither. The, okay. the first, you know, about, the, 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 about that far in. Okay. All right. And then if you go that, that, that sort of top wall of the vagina, ah. about uh, maybe about that far right. in. But it's closer to and the outside. And it's got outside. two bulbs right. that wrap around the sides. Well, that's, that's, well, that's the, the, the clitoris. Internally. The, the, okay. the internal it. legs of the clitoris. You see why this is so confusing? I, I don't even a, know. Need a white, <laughs> I need a whiteboard, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty okay. But see, pretty this, is, this is one of those ironies that, that we, we don't kind of love. We're, we're explaining this. the clitoris to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that's that's odd? That There's guys, something not right like about Like I said, it is, job right. title yes. aside, I should not know more about a woman's body than she right, does. Right, right. But see, that just shows you how uneducated unfair. people are yeah. about this. And, and, and really men is. and women, men Absolutely. probably. Well, look, look Absolutely. What's, what's Universal Sex Ed 101? How does everybody in the world start the process? Boys have a penis and girls have a vagina. Uh -huh. And there's a message behind that, that boys' stuff is on the outside and girls' stuff is all like shush, shush, shush. Yeah, yeah. You don't look, you it's don't a touch. mystery. You got no yeah. business down there. Yeah. It's for your gynecologist. Right. And that starts... Even women don't want to know what's down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We've right. been saying for years, what guy on the planet couldn't pick himself out of a lineup? <laughs> Right? Show a guy a picture of six penises, right. one of them his own. He's going to be like, what is this, a trick? Yeah, of course that's mine. Well, uh, but a lot of women not only couldn't pick yeah. themselves out of a lineup, but wouldn't. They don't want to look. Like, no. Oh, right. no. Mine, somebody else's, no. I don't well, that's look. really interesting. Mm -hmm. because There's a disconnect. Yeah. There. Right, there yeah. is, and there shouldn't be. No. There right. really shouldn't be. Wow. Mm. Uh, okay. Interesting stuff. This is why we have a job. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so what do you guys do? You, you're counselors um, uh, for people we with... Teach, uh, we teach classes, mm -hmm. college campuses. Uh, uh, I have a, a private sex therapy practice. I uh, mm -hmm. also have a training institute. Larry's on my faculty. We train uh, other psychotherapists. Mm -hmm. Modern Sex Therapy Institute. has got to give a plug. That's okay. Right. Uh, my business partner is a brilliant psychologist in West Palm Beach named Rachel Needle. Okay. Uh, she'd be a great guest for your show also. Oh, okay. She does a lot of uh, media in Palm Beach. She's oh, the I'd like to meet her. Stations like to call her a lot. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. She's a very uh, well-trained uh, well psychologist. And we train uh, uh, therapists and physicians and nurse practitioners to do sex therapy and sexual medicine, sexuality counseling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and along those lines, too, I, uh, uh, in addition <coughs> to teaching at uh, college and university and, and like nursing schools as well, uh, basically with a nonprofit institute called Sage Institute for Family Development. Okay. Um, our clinical director, Dr. Uh, um, Jill Jill. Morris, would also actually do well on, uh, on your show. She's marriage and family therapist. Okay. Uh, and I do uh, basically the uh, education and training for both professionals and, and the public through that. Hmm. 
Well, I think you guys are very valuable to society, especially Aww. given oh, given how you. little we know about our own anatomy. Which yeah. It's almost shocking. Okay, so we talked about female orgasm. Now I would like to talk about male orgasm and the differences mm-hmm. between the two. I, I guess the male, it's pretty straightforward uh, as opposed to... Yeah, point and shoot. <laughs> right. right. That's point how the shoot. urologists say, PMS, point and shoot. <laughs> right. right. But uh, you know, okay. from a plumbing standpoint. I'm sorry, I don't want to hop Yeah, there's the a whole psychological standpoint, too, yeah. that goes... But also, yeah. what most guys don't realize is that, uh, you know, because when male orgasm, it's like everything is clenched and adrenaline is pumping right. and <laughs> things are pointing and shooting, right? <laughs> but the erection process is actually a relaxation one. Right. Oh, guys, how does that work? Well, a guy has to... Uh, good sex for anybody. Men, women, good sex lives right at that sweet spot mm-hmm. between relaxation and arousal. Right, it's a balance. Right? If between you're too relaxed, relaxation and arousal. and arousal. Okay. If you're too relaxed, it's like drunk sex. Okay. Passing out, nothing works, nothing's right. lubed, everything's soft, right? Right. Too aroused is anxious. So if somebody's in bed and they're freaking out about what they look like and they're all like in their head instead of in this thing... Then they're too anxious, and then it's mm-hmm. like being on speed. And erections don't work then either. Right. Ah, okay. So guys have to learn how to relax. That Goldilocks. To get aroused. They have to get right into. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. We've this. We've been saying this for years. Yeah. The, the number one guaranteed way for a guy's uh, for a guy to lose his erection is to worry about losing his erection. Right. Ah. As soon as that thought pops in. Well, how do they keep that thought from popping? <laughs> well, Especially if they're nervous. By, okay, <laughs> if, it's going to happen to every guy. That's a fact. Okay. It's right. a ED is not right. losing an erection. It's a pattern of reacting to losing an erection. Right. Well, what, okay. we, what we often refer to as performance anxiety, yeah. right. which involves kind of stepping out of themselves and watching themselves, judging I gotta, from I a distance. I got to be big enough and hard enough and last long enough. Right? And oh my God, that's work. Well, that's I didn't pressure. realize there was all that going on in mm-hmm. their minds. Uh, yeah. yeah. If it, women usually think, I mean, globally, the, the, the stereotype is women think of guys as horny and looking for every sexual opportunity. But most, right. most guys, yeah, there is. But behind it, there's that anxiety yeah. because every, oh, goody, we're going to have sex, yeah. comes with a, oh, Uh-oh. I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on. My That's everything right. is on the line now. I better right. be perfect. Who is okay. that old quote? They were to, a listserv were on. They were trying to figure out the source of this old golden oldie that said, "Sex is perfectly natural, but it's never right. naturally perfect." Right. Ah. Um, I, I, you know what? I, it's something that I have been saying for thirty years. Well, people and were I saying never that got they it from even anybody. heard. Uh, <laughs> Masters, uh, was That's why you heard the quote. <laughs> somebody was saying they heard Bill Masters say it and quoted somebody else. So even right. fifty well, years. Well, I spoke you, to you know, Bill Masters 50, thirty years ago. Maybe you heard it from you. Now we trace that back to its roots. Yeah. Okay, a couple more questions about the male orgasm. Um, is oral sex as pleasurable for a man as intercourse, or more pleasurable? Do they prefer yeah. one over the I'm asking you to speak for, I wanna, I wanna to speak give for you an, all men. I want to give you an answer okay. that in all likelihood is an answer to the vast majority of questions that we have about <laughs> okay. sex. Okay. okay. And that is, it depends. It depends. Okay. Right? There are times when guys prefer that kind of stimulation, that length of time, in that moment, yes. Okay. But not all the time. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, sometimes... Uh, oral sex can be the complete event, and it could be great and wonderful. A lot of times, it's sort of a prelude to intercourse. You know, which right. I wish that's something that most people would get away from too. You Why know, is that? that? The main, main event. The idea. main event idea. Exactly. Right. Oh that's yeah, right. they, that all roads are supposed to lead to intercourse. Oh, yeah, I was right. watching one of your shows where you talked about that. That mm-hmm. it's, that doesn't necessarily have to be the goal. Right. right. You I talked mean, about kissing. That's right. As being I a mean, way to. Be I've, I've always been, you know, really a big fan of the the passion, the world passion. of eroticism. Okay. You hear that, everybody? Right. Mm. It's a whole world of eroticism right. and passion that lives in a kiss. Right. And, and so again, that can be just as exciting as. Uh, oh, absolutely. Really? Some, okay. I, sometimes well, more so. Yeah, look. Sexual tension, no matter how good it feels, it's a tension. Right. So just biologically, tension needs to be released. Re- released okay. Right. Mm-hmm. So very, very often, people feel with, with it's goal orgasm, oriented. Right. Well, orgasm oriented. Okay. It doesn't have to be <laughs> in the end zone at the same time, spiking and high fiving. <laughs> right. All right. Could be people could take turns, or it could be not this time, next time. So back to the ED thing. Right? Okay. If a guy experiences a loss of erection before uh, orgasm, he could just go, oh. I'll just focus on my partner's pleasure for a while, and then maybe he'll jump mm-hmm. back in the game. Mm-hmm. Or maybe he'll just, you know, sit this one out, and my partner will have a great That's time, right. and I'll get mine tomorrow. Okay. Or he could go, oh, sex grinds to a halt, jam on the brakes, 
everything stops. He can't make eye contact anymore, and he's grabbing his clothes. And <laughs> he's he's leaving. Right. Right. And, and, and then, then the couple then. dynamic becomes him being so ashamed and her spending the entire night trying to reassure right. him. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, right? And then what's going on in his head the next time, whether it's the next week oh, with a yeah. different woman Just or a month later pressure. or a year mm -hmm. later, all he's thinking is, He's talking to it, right? <laughs> don't you? Oh, don't you let me down again? Don't do this again. Don't let me down again. So, what's the guaranteed way to make it happen? <laughs> Worry about it happening, right. and that's ED. Mm -hmm. At least okay. the psychological. Okay, so right. you just now, put it out of your there's mind. There's the medical piece to it too. Yeah. It's a guy mm -hmm. who's, you mm -hmm. know, let's face it, a guy who's like 62 and overweight and diabetic and hypertensive. He ain't getting a lot of erections. Right. And that doesn't matter where his head mm -hmm. is. He just right. needs more friction, more fantasy, and maybe a little medical help, like right. a Viagra okay. or Cialis. Okay. Or and, and let me let me throw in on the on the tail end of that too that it, the answer is not going to be take testosterone supplements. Oh. And that's something oh, that most that guys do? really need yeah. to kind of stay. With. More often than not, nothing. We're okay. hormone crazy in this country. Yeah. You know, like the HCG and these clinics popping up and people doing all oh, these yeah. crazy. It's it's just not safe mm -hmm. and and. I've had a lot of patients that their urologist put them on testosterone, and all they ended up was angry with back knee. And back no, knee. no right. change in their desire, right. no change in their performance. Mm -hmm. It's not this miracle fountain of youth okay. thing that people want to make it out to be. Mm -hmm. uh, it okay. fixes some problems. Real low testosterone. You know, the, the endocrinologist would call it hypogonadism. Right. Mm -hmm. You could kind of see it when some old guys start to look like old women. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. They get puffy, mm -hmm. they get, uh, they lose hair. Mm -hmm. the, you can see the that estrogenic kind of. Oh, right? and that's when they would need right. testosterone. Then, sure, okay. that would be helpful. Yeah. Okay. But when if it, it's what they call, you know, a normal age related changes in uh, yeah. androgen levels. No, it's not going to help. Supplements right. won't help. Most guys okay. are like 50, 60, and they think they want to be like 25 mm -hmm. again. So right. testosterone is going to make them that, and doesn't yeah. work. Right. And that's really the thing. It's that that obsession with youth. We it's it's no longer oh, okay for us to get old. It's not okay in Boca. Not okay to get old. We're not a Los Angeles show. Okay about guys. <laughs> you, know? you know, hey, in our in our 70s, we're supposed to uh, perform as well as we did in our 20s. That's oh, the new sure. expectation. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's just not realistic. No, it's not. Well, more pillows. More pillows? <laughs> <laughs> pillows and pills. That seems to be okay, the yeah. solution. Who can orgasm more over the course of an evening? A woman or a man? Oh, definitely a woman. Yeah? Because there's that reload period that's, obli All that's things ob being obligatory yes. for men. Okay. That women just don't have. Right. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. Yeah. But there are some men, especially younger guys, and guy, and this is, you know, I tell guys, too, that this is a learned skill. Right? Yeah, there is that that sort of downtime. We call that refractory period. And how long is that? Ejaculates. It depends. Average, right? <laughs> it depends. A lot of it you know, depends here. Exactly. Right? You know, it's, it's, it, of exactly. course, a young, I look for concrete right, answers, guys. A, a horny seventeen-year-old <laughs> could have that. They call this refractory period. Could be ten minutes. Right? right or and again right. friction okay. fantasy like larry right. said a stiff breeze is all the friction they need <laughs> right. a 60 year old guy is going to need a lot more friction and fantasy and that uh -huh. refractory period mm -hmm. could be 24 hours yeah right. before okay. he's ready right. to go again okay so there and but there and but are a woman that no matter the age generally should, no wow. uh, but again it all things being equal if the woman is orgasmic if she's easily orgasmic mm -hmm. not all women can have multiple orgasms right uh, mm -hmm. that's another one of these sort of set up type of expectations okay um, but in general yeah women can more easily uh, have more orgasms but guys are capable of multiple orgasms as well and okay. part of a learned skill that even though a guy ejaculates he can still keep on going even if it means for a few minutes maintaining uh, sort of a half erection or partial erection and regain that sort of spark bring it back up these are learned skills well, how, how, how does someone learn something like of, that? Those of any guys listening, they probably want to know practice. how. Well, a lot of folks who uh, are, are fans of Tantra and, and devotees of these kinds of uh, yeah. principles, and, you know, it does take a lot of practice. Mm -hmm. Remember when mm -hmm. Sting used to talk about it on Howard Stern all the time, that he can go nine hours and uh, have an orgasm without ejaculating? I, I guess if you're Sting, you can <laughs> spend all day <laughs> having that. got that kind of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it didn't work, quite Not frankly. Not ejaculating, uh, having an orgasm yeah, without yeah. it. Is that possible for a Yeah, it is, but well, it is. practice. Orgasm yes, and they ejaculation are separate. are separate, but they usually occur together with men. See, I just learned something. Okay. Guys I thought can I was... learn how to orgasm without ejaculating. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to sound cynical, but 
you know, I like sex as much as the next guy, but I don't want to work that hard at anything. <laughs> that's like practice that I just, that's low, too low on the list of things I need on my, <laughs> my bucket list yeah. to learn how to do learn that. Learn how to do that. I uh-huh. could live without that skill. <laughs> okay, so we talked about um, kissing being something that doesn't necessarily just have to be a prelude to sex. It can be a no. sexual experience in itself. Yeah, and, and I think there's something generation, uh, generationally. Mm-hmm. That okay. that got lost. Yes, you know when you talk when about that. you Making know out say collectively when, exactly, kids don't make out know, anymore. Sta- no, no, and there was something so. there was something really exciting about yeah. stealing that time. Sure, you know that that sort of mm-hmm. alone and the kissing. And, yeah, and that's all you're doing. Maybe touching a shoulder. Mm-hmm. You know, you, for a lot of guys, that first time, that shoulder. You don't not <laughs> sure what it is, but you got something. something. I got my hand on something. Right? And, and <laughs> hoping for side boob in the movie <laughs> yes, theater. <I'm> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> there was something really exciting about sure. that. Sure. And, and I think, and, and, and yeah, because I think there was a um, a different script. Right. We yeah. we also mm-hmm. talk about this a lot as well. That I think back then it was more of part of this process where it was how we would get to know somebody. To see if we wanted to have sex, right, with right. But right. now that oh, whole it's sad, script isn't has it? been sw- uh, uh, switched. I've interviewed some and young women on the show, and it's have sex to see if I want to get to know you. Hmm. And kissing at best becomes perfunctory. It's mm-hmm. not that kind of dance, romantic. that erotic, passionate, yeah. romantic dance that you know right. it used to be. Uh, That's a again, shame. Not that everybody is like that, but mm-hmm. I think it's really sort most, of th- lost on, on most. I think of this generation. Yeah, I, I had a young woman in here, and. Uh, she told me that the way it works is you'll go out to a bar and a guy will identify who you are and then they'll direct message you. Mm-hmm. And then you have a hookup. <laughs> right. And then, that's it. So they no don't come over and talk to you. No and, conversation right. exactly. yeah. they and then you go you and you have sex. And you, what is that? You don't even you need Tinder or Grindr no. or even Craigslist anymore because now that's Instagram. Instagram. Uh, they have all that kind of stuff. It's all you know, the hookup. Yeah, right. So it's a uh, hookup culture. Yeah. yeah. And it's... it's Any kissing it's involved in these hookups, do you think? It's made its way no. into no. our generation, no. too, though. Isn't that weird? What? Right? Mm-hmm. This trend from the millennials that's made its way sure. up to our generation is no different now. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's become a hookup culture yeah. for everybody. Yeah. But, to, and, but to address that, that question about kissing being a part of that hookup, very often I'm finding it is not because wow. somehow girls, right, Mostly millennial girls, and see the most in, and probably started a little bit before then, uh, but somehow developed this prostitute mentality. Mm. Right? Yeah, I saw that, that on you one can, of your shows. You weird can put anything thing. in my mouth, but I'm not going to kiss you. Right? Is it and because they don't really like these guys they're hooking up with? You know, no, <laughs> Could I think be, it's, but it's an intimacy thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's another one of the questions that uh, you threw b- before the show. This idea of the difference between having sex or making love. Right. Or mm-hmm. screwing, right? Or whatever you Yeah, I want you to or, explain or that, dirty the difference. Word. Mm-hmm. I think that's that it kind of relates to this, yeah. you know, this attitude yeah, how of... How the of, connection is being made. Yeah. Um, I'm sure uh, anti-porn zealots would refer to it as a pornification of, of society, that everybody's mm-hmm. just thinking about, you know, this kind of thing. Um, this so what I, is the uh, difference between having sex and making love? Again, it same, it, same answer. <laughs> same answer. <laughs> Crazy making as that is, because it's an attitude. It's a right. way of approaching your partner. It's a way of being other centered, not thinking of mm-hmm. your partner as somebody you're getting off on or in or anything creepy like that. Okay. But really sharing an erotic experience. Mm-hmm. Intimacy is, when we were growing up, intimacy was a, a euphemistic word for doing it. So you'd say, oh, yeah, we were intimate. Yeah, we got wink, intimate. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, it's easy to do it, drunk and in the dark, yeah. with no intimacy at all. Right. And then be mm-hmm. awkward and uncomfortable because it, because it was so obviously not intimate. <laughs> obviously mm-hmm. not intimate. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, how do you define these terms? I remember a 14-year-old girl in a treatment center who was selling herself for crack. Uh, all her, the, the, her peers were confronting her on her behavior. Uh, said something, you know, one of them used the F word, and she was like, I don't do that. I make love. I'm like, oh, I felt like, oh, <laughs> really? you poor baby. I wanted to hug her and say, oh, come on. Really? You're so 14 years old, having sex with adult men for crack, but in her mind, she she's was making, making love. love. Right. Like, how tra- mm. tragic, right. real tragic. It Fortunately, really you know, she got clean and sober in treatment. Well, that kind of leads me to my next question. Do you think there are any females that actually want to have sex with a guy yes. just to have sex and not expect anything oh, out of yes. it? Well, well, I must be living in a Absolutely. bubble. I didn't think that was possible. You know, I, I often refer to that as sort of the, you know, the, the girls gone wild 
uh, uh, idea so you really that is this. caught on. There are a lot of women that are in it for theirs. It's no longer men that get in, get off, get out. Huh. Right? Really? There are a lot of women that are, that are kind of uh, adopting that as well. When it comes to self-pleasuring or masturbation, there are a lot of women that are just wanting to rub one out before they go. Just again, Almost a masculinization wow. of female huh. sexuality. <laughs> So we're seeing women taking control. Uh, Do men like that when women take control that way? Sometimes. A lot yeah. of men are intimidated yeah. by okay. that. I think uh, uh, mature or healthy or somewhat secure more involved guys. men, secure yeah. guys, love that. Okay, we're going to go to break right now, so hold that thought. Come back, we're going to talk about that and, and lots of other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. And now... Back to the show. Hi there. Back to the second half of the Becky and Boca show. Um, during the break, my intern asked my sex experts an interesting question. He asked if having a lot of sex makes a woman look younger. What do you say, guys? Guess what the answer is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it, it depends. 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 <laughs> no, but we, we said, Larry said only half jokingly that, yeah. you know, too much sex will make, make a woman look, look a little, a little yeah. haggard, a little, yeah, a little you know, a little run down. Tired, run down. Sure, but, sure. No, all kidding aside, there's the list, a very impressive list of health benefits mm -hmm. of regular sex, of regular orgasm. Yeah, and especially. Remember, you know, Such all, as? Even people not partnered, we're all equipped. We uh -huh. all know how, <coughs> such as, well, I mean, I, uh, depression, sure. better sleep. Well, was, we like to present it this way because we do a lot with, you know, sexual pharmacology and, and mm -hmm. always rail against the idea that people Google sexual pleasure. They're just going to see a sea of worthless pills and products. powders and yeah, products, right? People do so take we, too like, much. What, what, what's better for an antidepressant, a Prozac or a Paxil or a good orgasm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's better for <laughs> sleep, an Ambien or a good orgasm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's better for pain? Uh, Roxy's or Oxy's or a good mm -hmm. orgasm. A good orgasm. Across hmm. the board. Stress, anxiety. Right. And guys, Pros we can even add health. the fact that regular orgasms, particularly from their 20s on, has a tremendous impact on reducing prostate cancer. Does it really? Yeah, maintaining overall guys prostate health. Have wow. Regular ejaculations through their 20s and 30s have much, much lower prostate cancer rates in their 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because so have at it, guys. Yeah, yeah keep right. going. What if oh. you're past your 30s? And as I said, we're all equipped. <laughs> it's still, it's still, no, it isn't. So no, no one ever needs have another excuse to pressure somebody in having sex. <laughs> oh, baby, you don't want me to get yeah, cancer, you? Right. So you can take care of it yourself. <laughs> That's right. right. That's not a reason to mm -hmm. <laughs> guilt oh, somebody funny. into having sex they don't want to have with you. Um, somebody asked me that today. What? Um, if a, Why guys think if, if, if they express an interest and uh, a woman says, no, they're not interested, they think she must be interested and get into this like panicky right. chase uh, stalker kind of well, thing. Is that that much different than Louis C.K. and some of these other so. people saying, oh yeah. no, you don't want to go Literally. out with me? Well, let me show you my penis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, these guys are yeah, they're convinced it's consensual. Okay. Yeah. Right? Penis pictures. I have that on my list. <laughs> yeah, I don't get Is that, that ever I, a good so, idea to send a woman a picture of her I penis? Mean, where did guys Only get this if she idea? Asked. <laughs> I don't think it is. Okay. Right. Only if she asked. Why if not, if nobody wants to see that unsolicited. No. Stop it. No. With the penis pictures. <laughs> women don't want to see your penis. I know. Right. I've talked to some of my girlfriends about that. They're like, why would they do that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I love the fact, too, that in a lot of these situations, may, maybe the, the request is, well, send me a picture of you. Right. Okay. And they send a picture of their penis. <laughs> so me, this is how I represent. Let me see what you look yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. I think that says a lot right there. You're right. <laughs> okay, so what about the whole sexting thing, good or bad? Mm. It depends. Yeah. Okay. It's a, no, that's a, it's, that's it's, a mixed bag. I, yeah, too. I don't think it's... Either good or bad, it's right. sort of how are people doing it. I think it could be kind of it. fun, right? right. Yeah. How are people using it? What are they doing with it? Mm -hmm. uh, like anything else, it does require responsibility. Right. You know, yeah. and people I think know it's what they're important. doing and know the implications of what they're doing. Yeah. If nothing else, especially for younger people, yeah. have to know That's that everything they put out there is a permanent record. Right. And, and lives out there on the internet forever. <laughs> That's right. Right. <laughs> That's right. It does not go away. But so. every technology 
SpaceX has led, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, pulled that technology to the next level since uh, <laughs> sure. the telephone. Cave drawing. Yeah, cave sex isn't drawing. going I mean, away. As soon as somebody figured out how to take a piece of burnt wood and charcoal and draw on a cave wall, they were drawing pictures of sex. Right. <laughs> and so now, you know, there's this new uh, rapidly growing area called uh, uh, cyber dildonics. Mm -hmm. What is that? Of, uh, you know, e sex toys. Like, you can be in China mm -hmm. and I can be in the United States. And we can have toys that we remotely control from around oh. the world. Oh. You can wear something that I can mm. squeeze and you'll feel the yep. pressure on That you. I did not yeah. know. Sweater that mm -hmm. hugs you. Or sex toys where one can control the speed and the, the rhythm wow. across the, right. the, the planet. Right. They have a wow. lot of these, these, nice these, uh, uh, you know, Birthday these gift. campsites <laughs> right. where there's uh, a device that uh, usually the woman has, but sometimes it's also men. Uh, they'll actually either insert it anally, a woman will usually insert it vaginally, and as she has people or he has people watching them, and he's certainly, you know, they're performing for these people, mm -hmm. as they pay and send money and, and give mm. tips, it sends More? Uh, uh, impulses oh through, the, through the wow. device and through the toy, That's oh so it becomes crazy. very interactive. <laughs> That's really crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking about that. I mean, how wow. many years ago when I started thinking about what we can do with virtual reality? Sure. Uh, and plethysmography and, and some imagine of the toys women can make a lot of money stuff. that way, huh? That's the yeah. goal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. So if anybody does some Taught research and here. development of virtual reality and wants to do sort of uh, sex stuff, give me a call. <laughs> yeah, he's got <laughs> some good ideas. Okay. Um, can a male's ejaculation be prolonged? Orgasm can be prolonged. Yeah, assuming your ejaculation mm -hmm. is orgasm, which you guys just told me it's not necessarily. Right. So, I mean, there would, we would kind of have to make a separation. There, yeah. Right? Okay. Ejaculation is a physical expulsion. Okay. That is going to be a I guess couple be of <laughs> contractions, and that's it. Yeah. Now, but the that, orgasm that can be part, delayed, and of course, right? like for anybody, the longer it's delayed, usually the more intense the more and the intense longer it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So there's this thing. Uh, uh, how is it delayed? I'm not a guy. There's this thing called edging. This is what most the guys same way you naturally. Do it as a woman. Okay. Yeah, women do this naturally, and mm -hmm. most guys, when they're by themselves, do this. It's like finding the right scene or the right moment or the right fantasy mm -hmm. to, oh, now I'm going to let go. Okay. So, so edging they wait. is just holding back. off, holding right. off. Okay. Holding Br off. Bringing yourself and right then, up there, closer, then, closer, closer, and then pulling back. As a and this therapist. gives you a better orgasm? This yeah. is the treatment okay. for yeah. guys who, you know, come too quickly. That's ah, the treatment. Right. They practice that on their own three times a week, like a workout. Yeah. Okay. You know, just waiting, edging, what we call sure. it stop start. Right. Stop but start. Even, but even without any type of problem or, or issue, it will increase the intensity of the orgasm when the person does let it go. Sure. Right? Oh, if you give okay. it three, four times, pulling back like that, then when you do, it's more okay. intense. And of course, the longer time between ejaculations, usually mm -hmm. the bigger mm -hmm. volume. Uh, is built up now. Oh, that okay. I want to debunk another classic old myth All right. of blue balls. Uh, thank you. I was waiting the for that. That's not a real thing. That's not a nope. real. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. All of our no. proud penis owners. <laughs> That's right. We're kind of not revealing the code. Define. Oh our, yeah. Our okay. So they code, can't use that blue ball excuse. No. no. So they're not. Nothing's going to happen then if they don't. Happen. <laughs> yes, you know, you know <laughs> fears that once a guy gets aroused, he has to finish. Otherwise, or, things just yeah. start backing up. I actually heard that. That was the locker room rumor in high school amongst my girlfriends. Well, we needed you to believe that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> because it's like, look, look what you did to me. Do you want this no. to happen? So you have to take care of it. No, right. it's out of my hand. Right. Because but, I'll drop like empty clothes. I won't be able to get the lid on the coffin at the funeral. Right. Everybody will know you did it. And, exactly. But no, every guy that has to understand funny. the basic principles that what goes up does come down. Okay. And, and fluid if any guy is believes, resorbed. Right. It's not... And any guy yeah. who believes that once he gets an erection, no matter how raging it might be, <laughs> that he has to have has a release, to go, I bring invite it to fruition. you to, in that moment, simply think of your grandmother naked. <laughs> and then tell me what happens to that erection. There's some right? nice-looking grandmothers walking around Boca right. Raton, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, then somebody else's grandmother naked. Right? But, you know, it's a, this idea that things back up is just not yeah. true. Okay. Because if a guy goes for any length of time, no matter what is happening, without an ejaculation, as it as the the semen uh, and the sperm are being produced and it's filling up that tube, if it's not being released, it dies off. Just goes reabsorbs, reabsorbs into the keep, body. You know, okay. You know, like kind of Doritos. Just you know, In you will fact, just keep making more. Oh, this was crazy. There's this new like I guess birth control that we just heard about, right? Like this little band aid mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that a guy puts over his urethra. Awful. So that. 
What? He will ejaculate, and his ejaculate will stay in his urethra. This was actually like part of the selling, <laughs> part of, they were oh using gosh. this as a selling idea, that now he can go to the bathroom after sex for a change. Like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy to us. Yeah, like, really this is. Is the idea that it would just So the stay. sperm has to go, is supposed to go into the urethra, and that would be... Well, it would just stay in the mm -hmm. penis, and then he'd go urinate the bathroom later and get... It. Oh, oh yeah. wow. But, but, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. It really right, is. Right, right. But I guess it proves the idea that it can stay in there, right, without well, any mean, harm. But, the, but that does, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's the yeah. case. You know, I mean, that's like kind of, you Again, know, I don't want holding to in your out. sneeze. You're right. You know, yeah. Or blowing your nose but not letting it that, come yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. uh, another important question here I want to get to. What role do nipples play in sex? Breasts and nipples of women. Mm -hmm. That very important, right? Oh, a wonderful role. Okay. Sure. What, is, what does that do? Uh, it's a wonderful source of pleasure, uh, uh, stimulation. Okay. Uh, it releases all kinds of chemicals and yes. hormones that can actually help create that intimacy and that bonding. So it's but, foreplay? Uh, it, it you don't like the word foreplay. It doesn't have to be foreplay. just foreplay, okay. all throughout. But mm -hmm. I think it's, in a, especially in that context of foreplay, uh, men especially need to understand that you don't just go up to a woman who is not fully aroused <laughs> and start pinching nipples right? <laughs> or grabbing and squeezing. That, you know, women's bodies do operate a little bit differently. They, they, they do need to warm up a little bit more. That's as why they woman, need foreplay as opposed to men who don't? Well, I mean, it's not that we don't, but okay. it's not as essential for function and for, okay. uh, and for the pleasure. But part of that is as women become sexually aroused, actually just aroused in general, the pain sensibility changes. So mm -hmm. something that may be painful or annoying, whether it's pinching a nipple or smacking on the butt, mm -hmm. that should not be done when the woman is unaroused. Okay. Right? Because <laughs> at that point, it would be annoying and painful. But okay. when the body Later. is in a state of arousal, that could be very pleasurable. Ah. Okay? So it really has to be done correctly. But I think guys need to, and again, we're just talking heterosexually you know, mm -hmm. at this point, um, guys need to understand that they should be taken seriously. It's not just a, okay, grab, pinch, squeeze, move on. Grab a little bit. That this should be a <laughs> So there's a whole thing. bunch going on there with Absolutely the nipples that needs sure. to be addressed. Love to a woman's nipples. Okay. I mean, ah, it's right. the, I mean, it's not just, you know, bite, pinch, squeeze. Okay. You know, there's a lot. I mean, it's, it's. Well, elaborate on that for all these guys listening here. Um, what again, is making love to a woman's nipples? Um, <laughs> get, taking your time, first of all. Okay. Uh, kissing. Right? And, right. Uh, doing all kinds and just like there's so many different kinds of kisses there's so many different ways that lips and tongue can stimulate nipples mm -hmm. uh, and, and fingers and bodies and we, fingers we love, and bodies, you know, sexuality feet. educators love reminding people that the major sex organ of our body is not between our legs it's between our ears yeah the and brain the biggest, okay. the biggest sex organ of the body is the skin Right. It's oh, all one all organ, yeah. including okay. our genitals. It's all mm -hmm. covered by mm -hmm. the same skin. Mm -hmm. And that parts of our skin has a lot more nerve endings for very specific reasons. Right. Some of them, like our fingertips, that's important. And our lips. And yeah, tongues, I was watching one right? of your shows where you talked about very, all the... Very, um, dense nerve endings. Yeah, for the important lips kissing. Reasons, mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. our, there's, you know, our, we, very few across our back. It's, it's not important that we can feel like our fingers and our lips. Yeah. And other things for other sensual uh, 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 stimulation, mm -hmm. like like pleasure and yeah. arousal. Right. Mm -hmm. Nipples are also spongy tissue that fill with blood and get hard, and yes. lots of nerves that just love to be stimulated and mm -hmm. provide pleasure. Right. And that's all true for a guy as well, but most, especially heterosexual guys, don't like having their nipples stimulated. Oh. Uh, and something that's often uh, reported along with that is that that sensation is kind of intense. Mm -hmm. And it sort of makes them feel vulnerable. Okay. So heterosexual guys tend to Don't not like, like to do that. Okay. Um, basically, uh, um, gay men more likely to enjoy nipple stimulation, women more likely to enjoy nipple stimulation, but most okay. heterosexuals don't. Don't. Oh. Yes, now, I, okay. I have an old college buddy who was babysitting his six year old granddaughter and called me up in a tizzy because she said, uh, Grandpa, when I touch my nipples, I feel it. Uh, tingling in my vagina. Oh my! Mm -hmm. So we're just <laughs> they wired, figure it out. Yeah, right. We're that's wired. Right. We discover. Of course, right. Grandpa like that's going to panic and yeah. freak out. And, uh, <laughs> but all he had to say was, "Yeah, that, that's that normal. Feels really that's special. Right. And that's what people do when they're alone. 
That's in their right. bedroom or in the bathroom, <laughs> not at the dinner table, yeah. right? That's all. Okay. okay. So, I don't. I don't, don't want to just. But that's that's such an important lesson, though, especially when it comes to kids. We always need to be honest. We need to be upfront, mm-hmm. and you know, we have to answer their questions. But right. when we see these things, it's never about right or wrong. It's about public versus private behavior. I see. Okay. Right? So we don't want to shame them, and we don't right. want to, to to teach them these negative things about their bodies. But we do want them to to know, to know that it's this private. idea of privacy. Right? Yeah, that's a good point. But also that their body can be a source of pleasure. Yeah. And that's oh, absolutely. We don't want to. Mm-hmm. We want to take them away from that. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to break here, and my good friend Karen Turk is coming back after the break. We're going to start talking about things that might be a little more kinky, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, and I guess she knows a lot about that. All right, we'll be right back. (laughs) And now, back to the show. You can explain yourself. (laughs) Hi there. (laughs) Okay, back after the break here. uh, Karen Turk has joined us, and she's a little upset that I said she was a mistress. I didn't say you were a mistress. I said you You told me you had a dominatrix. Let me clarify. I wasn't exactly a dominatrix. I dated somebody for a while who had some interesting hobbies, and he decided mm-hmm. to share those hobbies with me a little bit later into the relationship. But I guess we're going to talk about that. But yeah, we, we kind of bonded over fetish. Yeah. yeah, the reason I invited Karen is that she and I share a common follower on social media, and his name is Bunyan Lover. Mm, oh, Bunyan Lover. Yes. And he always wants us, whenever we're filming together, he'll chime in and wants to I stick our shoes off. I think he runs the Google group. The Google group? There's a the, Google the, group. There's yeah. Google group, Yahoo groups. There are actually... That's a thing. I kind of That's looked into thing. after that. Yeah? Do you want to see how prevalent it really was? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a big fetish community. Wow. Uh, yes. Specifically Not to be bunions. confused So that's like AOL fetishes. back in the day. Because AOL used oh, right. to be a little yeah. scandalous. Remember that? Yeah. Those chat rooms. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. town but, uh, forum. But Bunyan yeah. Lover, I think, is the one that uh, uh, runs the Google Bunyan Oh, okay. Group. He's, he's a high, he's a high ranking. Right? <laughs> high ranking. Well, now, I don't know if it's one Bunyan Lover or Bunyan. This, this, I mean, but this, what's funny, what was funny but that's, a, that's a sandal. Yeah. It's very different than a foot fetishist. In fact, one guy, we were laughing yeah. about this. One guy said, no, I'm just into Bunyan. It's not like I'm a foot fetishist. That's silly. That's, silly. <laughs> that's the same guy. That's him. That's our guy. That's him. That's, that's, our, guy. Guy. that's our guy. And he actually <laughs> likes the curvature of the foot. This he is commented his. on a photo when you were in a group photo he recently did, apparently someone who was in one, one of our group photos who will remain nameless actually had a bunion mm-hmm. and he said something about look at that woman on the left look at that bunion now, I'm, I'm that curious bunion. if you're taking a group photo how do <laughs> the bunions very... become so prominent well I mean it, it was, was a, a standing photo. up full photo feet. and the girls want their shoes in the photo she was wearing um, fabulous shoes this oh, woman was wearing sandals shoes. ah okay uh-huh. Yeah, but okay. I, I, I want to point out before we go any further that Karen and I do not have any bunions. No, we do that clear. And I enjoy <laughs> shoes. So. Shoes are kind of my fetish. Yeah, you're so. going to be more likely to get bunions than me because you wear those Louboutins. It's a matter you know, of time. She was and then in maybe Bunny for... and I, a lover, and I can bond over bunions. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Karen was in trouble recently. Wait, too just, long. Uh, I want to talk about your notoriety here for a minute. Um, <clears throat> you were charged with or accused of what it. Uh, Explain it, Karen. I was I was accused. Somebody tried to get an emergency injunction over me threatening them with a shoe, which was Lube- completely inaccurate Lube-tin. on how it went down. Big, but it is know, what it is. The heel of a, a Louboutin stiletto, mm. which was a very nice that shoe. It happens damage. to be my favorite shoe. And I again, I I understand <laughs> the shoe fetish thing, the bunion thing, not so much. Yeah, the shoe fetish, totally get it. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, um, tell us about this guy you dated, Karen, that you found out into the relationship that he had a fetish, fetishes? Listen, what? I have a lot of questions about this, because this is, I mean, okay. it brings up a couple of really interesting things. Is like, when do you tell somebody? Because I guess a lot that's of people are question. embarrassed sure. when they have yeah. something. You, that's tell that's you, you don't, don't want to tell somebody away, right? right? Well, yeah. and I think that's, you know, that, that issue, more even more generally, is when is the right time to share any type of fantasy uh, uh, yeah. Particularly with a new partner, right. right? Right. Which is this is kind of what we're talking about. I mean, it's it's a, it's a type of fantasy play, fetish play, fantasy play. It's really kind of the same thing, mm-hmm. uh, and it's always a risk 
because mm-hmm. you're always going to risk, you know, the, the person the woman you reveal leaving. that to. Saying, that's Karen disgusting. Didn't leave. And, and <laughs> Karen, away. Karen stuck and around. Uh, but no, no but, I tried. I, I made a serious <laughs> valiant effort because it was about the clothes a, for me. I was mm-hmm. like, ooh, like I get to go buy clothes. Right. Like, and you're going to give me a credit card and I can go and buy sexy clothes and leather? See, there's a selling point. I was point totally, that awesome. part was good. That's it was awesome. the other stuff that was a little too much for me. So, how did he reveal his fetish to you? Um, It was kind of a slow process, which was actually kind of nice. Like, I mm-hmm. kind of like we had this like again I thought it was about the shopping and we just weren't on the same page and I think that's the bottom line <laughs> what kind of things were you shopping for a clothes what kind of clothes leather pants, leather. Yeah, like leather things leather I would wear out anyway like now did you know I mean but you didn't know why, why you were shopping you were I didn't know the extent kind of, of the fetish I guess is a good way to mm-hmm. right. put it but were there but comments made as you were trying oh, things yeah. on I mean, and putting things on of course which you know that was cool yeah. and then it got to the level where I was no longer comfortable it was sad because we had a lot in common he's a really nice person it just wasn't something that could continue because I was like yeah that's <laughs> kind yeah. Of maybe not a little much did you get to keep, did you get yeah. to keep the leather pants I did. I got a lot of really good clothes. It was a long yeah. time ago, yeah, yeah. though. I mean, I've been married for a stop. while. So I was actually didn't... married twice since then, so... So you didn't, you, break up with him. you didn't break up with them right away. You let the shopping continue for a while. I, I did. I tried. <laughs> I really did. I really liked him. He's a great but guy. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, the, the sex columnist, Dan Savage, always... Uh, I, I think he's the one uh, that started GGG, right? Yeah. Good giving and game. Yeah. And if okay. anybody thought about that in a relationship, just try and be good, be good to each other... Be giving and be game to try something. Good, good be open minded, right? Well, try yeah. consider. And, people, and you consider it. Consider to try it as I the consider same for a me. lot of things. Right. There's some things I've tried that I didn't like and some right. things that I do like. Then when the dominatrix thing comes in. I, you know, I, I, I'm more on the submissive side, I think. I think my husband would probably agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like leather. I know. So, you know, yeah. it's about the clothes. And you, you still yeah. like costumes, Karen. I've seen you in, I, I love a uh, costume. Uh, on I Instagram. love <laughs> a good costume. <laughs> a good, sexy costume, I'm all in. Yeah. Well, now, is that important like, to men? I guess it is. Did you ask furries the yeah. other night? Where yeah, we asked about night? furries. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's I think, taking that's, costumes. To, yeah, that's a little too far. This is another level of commitment. Yeah, I was in. If you're a My Little Pony... And a oh, ponies! <laughs> we got in trouble with ponies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not like that kind of trouble. That wasn't in, uh, I don't think this I, is the right Chihuahua, show for it? that backyard. <laughs> it was in her backyard. She had these circus ponies, you know, the kind that are like dyed pink and stuff. And we did a little live feed video of me and riding we one did. and her riding oh, the, the other one. People didn't like that. <gasps> brought on a lot of haters. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, and I already have some haters, so that just brought it to a whole know, new the, those audience. Those ponies looked small, but they were very strong. Yes, and yeah. their owners yeah. were right there. They were their <laughs> pets. We didn't do anything wrong. They could hold up to like 350 pounds each. Yeah, but and you want to know what the owners were like? Go right ahead. They were happy to have us there. So mm-hmm. if they had, I mean, I feel like it's their pet. They're it's their yeah, responsibility. Their responsibility. Yeah. They should have told us. Hey, there, are, you know, Delray <laughs> Beach in particular. I remember years ago passed a city ordinance preventing green dyed pigs for the uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day parade. Uh. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Yeah, doesn't really matter if they <laughs> order the or not. That brings up, like, body painting. I like mm-hmm. body painting. Yeah, sure. I think there's something body very... Now, that's okay. Um, I, can't, I don't know, you know can if I can say humans, that on the radio. Right, right. <laughs> right. The, okay. lady, the ladies in Times Square in New York, have you seen that? Oh, yes, uh-huh. yes. Ah, I'm going to be there next mm-hmm. week. I'm going to have to Paint check it? that out. Yeah, I'm going to uh-huh. post some photos. Especially the brave ones that are out all year round. In the winter. Yeah, also a commitment. I've actually seen them. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so this fetishist, he, what did he want to do once he got you all dressed well, in leather? I, listen, I don't want to go to, into anything too <laughs> yeah, graphic it's, it's, it's here. It's a dinner but hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it was, again, it was just kind of above my comfort zone. But, like, I get the whole, like, the being tied up thing. I think there's a lot of women who like the submissive side. And I think for him, he was such a dominant person. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've read now, because of course I wanted to figure out why it didn't work. And I had to analyze the situation. Even though you got the leather pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got leather yeah. pants. But I think people who are really dominant, like I'm really dominant, like I kind of want my husband to, you know, be a little bit, you know, dominant with me. Well, right. it's been said for a long time, the best way to learn about control and how to appreciate control is to give up control. Mm-hmm. And that's Ooh, why very often well, be very hard you for see even in, freak, in, in mm-hmm. like S and M and yeah. and DNS type of right. situations, it's the submissive one that is in control. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because so they're the ones who really call the shots. It's also why there are a lot of you know big CEOs, 
that on their lunch break Powerful are going to go judges, to a dominatrix right? uh, and hello. get a dog collar, be put <laughs> yeah. in diapers and be dragged around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. when they're so into it, so used Beyond to being in my control. comfort yeah. zone. Not saying that was it, but that's well, look at what the movie yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey. How popular was that? People that's are interested in like this that. stuff. That's that. totally yeah. my deal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You, <laughs> you know what's really sexy? Transgression is sexy. Yeah. Well, okay, explain yeah. that. Being naughty. The little bit of mystery, the little tying up, not knowing what's exactly right. what's going to mm -hmm. happen next. Yeah. Within, Being reason. Spicy. Within reason. Within so reason. Well, you have to trust the person, I would imagine. Yeah. That's right. I mean, you right. have to yeah. be, you, right. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, that, we won't go into specifics, but I mean, yeah. I'm a pretty vanilla person, I guess, is a good way to put uh, it. Does that make sense? Not yeah. after I introduced yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but see, I think go. where, and again, this, this transgression thing, this is why, you know, sometimes, you know, being, having, having that gameness, being open to trying things, even if they seem way out of the, uh, uh, the realm of what you're used to even being a little nervous having a little bit of that edge mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of where eroticism exciting. really lives yeah. so if you have that trust you have that communication excitement you're trying something new and it, it kind of raises the level of everything yeah and it's a yeah. really really good approach so-called vanilla people could learn a lot from kinky people oh so yeah so I, I agree about because boundaries. i would have maybe never would have even thought about exploring anything beyond what was in my understanding until i met this person and they kind of shared this with me and i was like wow like a whole different like thing that i haven't even thought about like mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right <laughs> and people just kind of have to get over that initial what? Yeah, what? yeah, there was definitely an initial like what? Mm -hmm. Things that you heard about the leather pants and you were. <laughs> you know, and then the clothes kind of took over. Yeah. There you go. The year you're talking about, I think leather pants were the hottest thing, Listen, right? I still and they love a cheap. leather pants. You still have those pants? I don't have those pants, but I have other replacement leather pants. So that's an upside to trying new things with your right. partner. You can get stuff. Right. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. You can get clothes. Well, you, you should date a foot fetishist, then go get more oh. of those shoes. Oh, the oh, oh. That's There you go. <laughs> Buying shoes for you would be like crap. There you go. This <laughs> every day. Okay, I think we got to go here. Uh, you know, the music Had a means. great Thank time. So Sex much. Talk with the Seagull Brothers. Your show is on Monday nights. Monday nights at 9 p.m. And uh, you're on the so same fine. network that I am. Yep. 9 p.m. And yep. uh, your you. shows like oh, mine stay on your Facebook page so they can yes. be viewed at any Correct. time. So go go take a look because I was going back and watching some of those. Very interesting, guys. And I hope we can Thanks. do this again. Yeah, I'm going to have you on our show. Yeah, I'm going to come on yeah, your show. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Learn a lot. I'll bring Karen with me. All right. Okay, see you next week. Bye-bye. Right. Have a good night. You have been watching and listening to The Becky and Boca Show.